and we're back. Man, been testing the traditional heaters, make the sauna hot between 165 and 200 degrees in an infrared cabin. And I think people are missing the boat, man. All these guys that wanna make the sauna hotter, it's the temperature of the air cabin, you're severely confused. I'm getting a better sweat. I don't know if you can see uh, in here. I'm getting a better sweat at, I've been in here for maybe 25 minutes. I started at 135, creeping up to 140. I'm getting a better sweat, feel better, getting a better um, cardio workout than with the traditional heater uh, for the hybrid test that we did in the Facebook group on the other uh, corner sauna. And granted, there's a little bit more infrared penetration in this small guy, but still the amount of heat that we had in there, the body response to that is completely different. I actually prefer this. And it's what we've been saying for years, you know, in, internal air temp in an infrared sauna, comparing that to a finished sauna is extremely misguided. And so now that I'll be back in the game, getting back to regular scheduled programming, I think we're going to publish um, a few tests that kind of demonstrate this. And everybody that thinks that they have an infrared sauna and only goes up to 150 and they're not getting, you know, the benefits and they have to make it hotter and add these heaters and do all this stuff. I think you're forgetting about the mechanism of heat delivery that determines what uh, creates hyperthermia in the body. And making the air cabin hotter is not only changing um, the response, especially in your breathing, but it also changes the way that your heart rate ramps up, right? right? So you're kind of getting a light cardiovascular workout, maybe zone one. For some people that are really out of shape, zone two, you know, just sitting in a sauna and not moving, which is incredibly beneficial, but there's also uh, a change in your body's response when that happens. And if you're not accounting for that and you're just basing it off of air temperature, we, I mean, can't beat a dead horse so many times. Air temp in an infrared sauna does not, or any sauna in a finished sauna, does not necessarily correlate to an increase in core temp, body core temp in the same fashion. So just using temperature as an overlap metric between different types of saunas is not effective. And then if you throw water in there and you're talking about steam, I mean, this is a whole new thing because you have condensating on your skin, which is tricking you while you're breathing the superheated air into thinking that that is being expelled from you. And that's not the case. And people saying that you need to reach a particular temperature to make heat shock proteins are both right and wrong. There's no reason that you need 170 degrees to elicit the same core temp increase as 130 or 140. And that is an arbitrary number, right? Like just because an infrared sauna says a particular temperature, I mean, you could still be getting infrared penetration core temp increase at 120 degrees and it's fine because the mechanism of heat delivery and what's what's um, causing that reaction is completely different. So the temperature of the air that you're breathing, yeah, maybe it has an effect on your lungs, but is it, um, to say that that's not as effective as a, another particular temperature when you're not comparing apples to oranges is extremely misguided. And I think people are missing the boat. Even me sometimes, you know, we're hanging 250 watt heat lamps on a separate circuit in some of the saunas to test, you know, certain types of PBM stuff. We've got Andrew, um, who's got some top secret projects, who is making, um, you know, a really good red light therapy device that can go in the sauna with no fan so that it will withstand the heat. And also I'm trying to figure out how to make it super easy to install. I wanna to talk to him about that. I mean, there's a way to be combining these therapies and getting the most benefit and still not have to drive the sauna temperature up, you know, so severely that you think anything less than that would be providing any benefits. So now that we're back, it'll be regular scheduled videos and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Are you looking for the best home sauna options on the market? I can't tell you how difficult it is to find good information on these things. That is, until I came across this guy, Matt Justice of CertifiedSaunas.com. He took the guesswork out of finding a safe, low EMF, low VOC infrared sauna for my home. And now, my family and I enjoy it every single night as part of our health ritual. I love the no-nonsense approach Matt takes when reviewing some of the most popular brands. And he's not afraid to tell you the truth, even when it impacts him in a negative way. My wife and I almost fell for the Amazon five-star rated saunas. But when Matt talked to us behind the scenes and showed us how they manipulate the reviews, we were blown away. He even has pictures and videos of him buying and installing a couple of those cheaper saunas. And you can clearly see the lack in build quality. I couldn't be happier with our decision to go with a sauna recommended from CertifiedSaunas.com. 
The companies Matt suggested were low pressure, answered all of our questions, and even honored Matt's discount code.